The Earth absorbs sun's heat at different rates. This is due to our planet's surface being a mixture of land and water because of this uneven heating of the planet which causes wind. To visualise this, throughout the day, the air above the land heats up faster to the air that is above the ocean and sea. This warm air that hovers above the land expands and rises. In doing so, it makes way for the heavier and cooler ocean air. And this is how wind is formed. With the difference in air pressure, this causes the air to move and is how our sustainable element known as wind is produced. It is so powerful that we are able to use it to generate close to 27% of the UK's total electricity. Welcome back to Design Technology On Demand. My name is Charlotte and I make weekly videos helping you to succeed in your design technology GCSE. So why don't you hit that like and subscribe button. What is wind energy? Wind energy is the term used to be able to describe the process on how wind is used to produce electricity. With the invention of wind turbines, we are now able to convert kinetic energy from the wind into electrical energy. What is the difference between kinetic energy and electrical energy? Kinetic energy is moving energy, the energy an object has because of its motion. If we use the example of wind, a gentle breeze can make the blades of the wind turbine spin and this creates kinetic energy. As the blades rotate, this kinetic energy converts into to a rotational energy. It is this rotational energy that is then transferred through the turbine's generator, producing electrical energy. Okay, so we have learned how wind is formed and how kinetic energy is used. Let's expand on this and learn how wind turbines work. Wind turbines usually stand around 80 to 120 meters high. Over the years and development of these machines, increasing turbine heights and blade lengths has resulted in them being more efficient in capturing more energy. This structure will consist of an anchoring ring, a tower and the blade. These magnificent engineered machines work by the rotor, which consists of three large blades, being forced by the wind to rotate and produce rotational energy. From here, within the engine is a multiplier, or also known as a gearbox, which is located between the propeller and the generator. The job of the multiplier is to increase the speed of the rotational energy that is produced. This leads us to the generator. This is where the rotary energy is converted into electrical energy. The electrical energy passes through the underground cables to a transformer substation. And the energy is directed to us for us to be able to use to power our things. Where are these wind turbines typically located? Normally, we would find these machines on tops of hills as higher elevations generally result in increased wind speeds. The energy produced here is labeled as onshore wind energy and comes from not one or two turbines, but a wind farm similar to the solar farms we saw in the solar energy video. Just 20 minutes from central Glasgow is the UK's largest onshore wind farm, accommodating 215 wind turbines. Across the UK alone, there are a total of 10 onshore wind farms. We have six in Scotland, two in Northern Ireland, one in Wales and one in England. Okay, another place where wind farms can be found is in the open waters. The energy produced here is offshore wind energy. It is well known for the wind to blow more at sea as it can produce up to twice the amount of power than on land. This is due to having higher and constant speeds and a lack of barriers in the way. The largest offshore wind farm in the UK consists of 165 wind turbines and found roughly 89 kilometres from the Yorkshire coast. Worldwide, there are a total of 162 offshore wind farms and many more under construction. Okay, so we've covered quite a lot in this video so far. How wind is formed, how wind turbines work, how their job is to convert this energy into electricity. And we've just looked at where they would be found. Let's finish the video by looking at the advantages and disadvantages of having wind turbines. I'm sure you can agree and see the value in what wind turbines have to offer. Minimise the effects of climate change and global warming. It is a clean and renewable energy source. It is reasonably cheap in comparison to other energy sources as it is relatively low in maintenance cost. They also have a low impact on people's lives as they tend to be located and built in less populated areas. Lastly, the wind turbine industry has already generated over 1.2 million jobs and will continue to grow in future years. Okay, now let's see if there are any disadvantages to wind turbines that affect the wildlife as low-flying birds can be harmed or killed by the huge rotating blades. Lastly, turbines produce noise and alter visually aesthetics of the land. Many consider them to be an eyesore and wouldn't want to live within a close range to them. Most people agree to having this type of energy but use the term NIMBY. NIMBY, or not in my backyard, is used for the movement where people try to fight the system to keep developments from being built near their homes that may have a negative effect on their property. Property. Some examples would be a wind farm 
or airports? Let's see if you really understood the information from this video. Try answering this question. Name one benefit to having wind turbines. Make sure you put your answer in the comment box below. Thank you for watching this video and you've got this exam. You're now well on your way to achieving a level nine. Just make sure to hit that subscribe and like button and make sure you check out some of my other videos linked in the description box below. See you in the next video.